Hi, Internet viewers. This is Frank Rauscher again. Uh, we had shaped the head the last time. And uh, what I want to do now is to just finish up a little bit. Uh, we had this head, we had shaped it out along this pencil line here. And what I want to do now is I'm going to show you uh, the round this over. It's it's sort of flat in the middle, but we'll lose this edge. And then on the rest of the body, I'm going to show you different ways of sanding this so that we could prepare putting feathers on. So uh, I will re uh, move the camera down so that you can uh, look straight down on what I'm doing and see I have a better shot at this, and I'll show you... Uh, uh, that we will proceed on, and then I'll show you how to pencil this stuff on the tip. Very good. I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're going to show you a couple of devices to be able to sand all this. I have a Swiss-made sandpaper. This is actually uh, cloth-bound, and I like this a lot, but you can use any sandpaper. And this is a, a 120, I use 150. And you could come in and you can hand sand all this stuff. And you can do the breast area here. I mean, the, the mantle, the wing area, the breast area. And you don't need to do all this yet. It's just getting this all smoothed up in here. And, and you can do that by hand. A couple other devices that I like is uh, this type here. It's it's a has a a taper to it, and it's a uh, a setup where you run this on your uh, micro grinder, and it really does a nice job. It gets into the tight areas, and uh, they come in different shapes. Uh, this is like a pointed one, but here's some. It comes with the mandrel, and it has 10 of these in here, and they last a while, and you want to run them at half speed. Uh, like a set like this with the mandrel is about $8, and they really work out nice, and you can get it fine, medium, and coarse, and uh, really works out well. And I'm going to show you a little bit on how I, I do this. I come in here. And to get all the scratches out or anything that may be there that the bits had left, I'm going to just come in and sand this all out. And it's not, you're not really putting a lot of pressure to it. And the other thing I meant to mention to you, when you're running this, you want to run this at half speed. Like uh, my machine runs 45,000, you want to get it down to at least half of that. And, uh, and I come in and I sand it. I like this for the head area because I, I have more control and it uh, gets me in tight and it really does a nice job in here. So I try to uh, use this in this area and it's very nice. You could do hand sanding as well, but this is just a, makes life a lot easier when you use this type here. So if you ever need them, I have them available, but this is uh, one way of doing it. Now, when it comes to the body, I use a Fordham, which is this type here. There's several different types out there, but I like uh, Fordham. I've been using and selling Fordhams forever. So uh, I like this. It's got a sander attached to the handpiece. And this type here has a keyway. You stick in and turn, and you can take the sandpaper out, and then you can fit it back in again. You can put regular sandpaper. It doesn't have to be the cloth-bound one like this, but it does come with a template that shows you how to cut this so it'll slide right in, and it really works out nice. There are a, a bigger one I use as well. This one is uh, very convenient as well. So... I will show you on this one. I'm going to put this on. We're going to come in here. And what we're going to do is sand.
sand all the area. And the bird here on the mantle. Not on the head though. And the wings. Get it nice and smoothed out. You can do the belly a little bit. If you want to come down into the tail, get that smoothed out real well. And you don't want to reshape it because you don't want to lean real hard on that. And this does a real nice job on that. And uh, so you want to do that either with the hand sanding or with the Fordham. That works out really nice. And what it does, it does uh, prepare for uh, you marking this out. It, it, it smooths out all the edges and and uh and it prepares us to start marking the feathers that are in in here and i'm going to show you how to do that i'm going to uh grab my ruler and the center line i want to make sure this is the center line of the body that we established and i want to make sure i don't lose that so i'm going to put that back in so you can see that as well and then uh, what the first thing we're going to try to establish here is the mantle and the mantle is this here it's this area right in here it's this right along this line right here and we want to get the mantle in and that's in the profile in the top view it's this line of action going across here. This is where the mantle ends right here, but it comes right on up into uh, the head. So, but right here is what we're trying to establish right now, this here. So what I've done is I'll lay my uh, bird right next to this and then I'll approximate about where the mantle goes, which I put a dot there okay and then you have like a an arc that swings around here so what i'm going to do is try to mimic that as best i can initially so i'm going to come around here and and it starts spiraling that way and then i'm going to come over this side and do the same thing and just get get an arc that goes through there that sort of locates that spot now i'm going to come in and what i want to do the central point here's your mantle coming down i want to establish this point right here right off because this will show you where the mantle ends and then also this is what you call a drop wing right in here this is where uh, you see this with a lot of different birds uh, the most common one that you see is a robin. They they tend to, when they're looking for worms and stuff like that, most of the time they don't pull their feathers in. They, they drop the wing down. This is called a drop wing right here, and that's the position I picked this uh, cardinal to have. So I need to establish this point right there. So... What I do is I take a measurement from the tip of the beak to that point, and it looks like I got one and a half inches. So I'm going to take a, in profile now, I'm going to take a, a measurement as the crow flies. Okay, so I'm looking down from the top, and I'm getting the tip of the beak and the, my inch mark there. And then I'm going to come back an inch and a half so the inch and a half is, is right here now i need to also find out how far out from the breast area the edge of the breast in does this fit and it's going to be let me get my looks like three eighths so i'm going to come over here and look straight down to out at the edge here and measure in three eighths and right on that line i'm going to put my other x mark okay so that's our target right there so we're an inch and a half
from the beak and I draw a line this way coming down. Then I measure in straight into that, you know, not on that same straight vertical line I drew, but something that's going towards that line that's three eighths from the outside edge to there. And I put an X. Now I have this arc coming around here and that's this here. I want to try to draw that in. So a good starting point would be right where we have that. So we're going to come out just a little bit and we're going to swing up and we're going to meet up like that. So we'll get that established. Okay. Let's see if I got that. Yep. Everything looks good there. Let me check myself out here a minute. Because I think... Let's, let's see where we are here. For the heck of it. Always good to check yourself out. So I'm about five inches up. Okay, that's what I thought. I messed up. I have uh, from the tail up five inches. So let me do this. Boy, was I off. So it's a good thing to check. That mark should have been here. Okay. And then that arc was supposed to be here. Okay. And I'm going to erase that out. So always check. And that's, that's one thing I meant to tell you. Is just like everybody else, I can make my mistakes too. So the measurement is from the tip of the tail up to this point is five inches. So if you lay your ruler straight down on that, and you come up five inches, that's where the mantle lies. Now, I'm gonna have to, this point is still good. So what I need to do now is I'm mimicking this, so it's coming over and it's dropping down and coming up like this. So I'm really making this swing right here. I think I should come out a little bit more. There you go. Come out like this. Let me clean this up and get the one single line instead of a thousand of them. So I'm going to arc this over, 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 and around like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I have an inch and a half from the tip of the beak as the crow flies. So I'm laying my ruler parallel to the table, coming over, putting a line here, and then I want to come in three-eighths of an inch from the belly. And that should be right about there. So I'm going to put an X right there. Okay, then I'm going to start arcing this up like this. Here's this coming up and around, and we connect. Now, one thing you want to do before we go any further is when you look at it, you want to make sure it's symmetrical. About I know this is turning in a little bit, but the body itself... The locations are pretty much the same. So that will establish us for the mantle. Now, uh, from here, I will start on the next video taking measurements, and I'll show you how to work them down in here so we can get all these feathers that are in this drop wing area. Uh, on here. Uh, the ones in the mantle, I'll show you how to develop them later. Uh, right now, the main feathers and is what we're trying to do is get all these feathers right in here 
lift it and raised off of, off this bird because they're the primaries and the secondaries and the, uh, the coverts and what have you. So uh, let me get you on to the next video. I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. Uh, if you did, please uh, subscribe and give me a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next video. And I thank you.